Hi and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to talk about what you need to do if you're interested in starting out as a bird photographer or bird watcher. So come along and enjoy this adventure. Well, I think one thing I get asked all the time is, how do I get into bird photography? Where should I start? Well, and the first step is buying some camera equipment. Now, <laughs> this can be a little bit daunting. I can tell you from personal experience, I bought the wrong equipment the first time I went into it. I bought a Canon Rebel T3 and I bought a kit lens over the counter at a camera shop in in Massachusetts and I went out and took pictures and I was so frustrated with it that I couldn't believe how frustrated I was I just couldn't get the pictures I wanted I could see the birds and when I took the pictures when I got home the pictures weren't any good so the first thing I would suggest that you do is you call a reputable company uh, companies that suggest are B&H on the internet and a local camera shop if you have one in your area here in Raleigh North Carolina we have a camera shop called Southeast Camera. Very good company to deal with. B&H is also a very good company. But buy some used equipment. Like this is the Canon 5D Mark IV. This camera goes for $2,500. Now they have a Canon 5D Mark V that's coming out. So this camera will actually go down in price. But the Canon 5D Mark III is less than $1,000. And to give you an idea, 18 months ago it was $2,500. And the Canon 5D Mark II, which are all excellent cameras, are going for like $500. And this, when it comes to lenses, you can do the same thing. You buy a lens that's one generation out of model, and you'd be surprised how well they are and how inexpensive they can. Because a lot of people instantly upgrade. It's like cell phones. It's like when the latest and greatest cell phone comes out, people go out and sell the used ones. So that's one way that you can save a lot of money on camera equipment. You do need a halfway decent camera, but you gotta look at a camera like a computer. They come out with new ones every two years and these things are like computers, they just wear out. The glass on the other hand can last you a long time. Glass lasts a lot longer. So if you're gonna spend more money, spend it on glass versus the camera because the camera is not as important as the glass. So that's step number one, buy some used equipment. Number two, binoculars. You've got to be able to find the birds before you can take pictures of them. Um, having a pair of good binoculars is really good. And binoculars are a lot of, you know, once you get to a certain point, to get much better than that, you have to spend a huge amount of money. So the pair of binoculars that I suggest for most birders, and the pair of binoculars that you will see around most birders' necks is the Monarch uh, Nikon Monarchs. They are really good binoculars. Um, I, I can tell you that I would say over half the people that you will see at any major birding event will be wearing a pair of Nikon Monarchs. So that's where I was trying to think. Again, Nikon stands behind them like a rock. So it's a really good option. So that's my second tip. Buy a pair of binoculars. and this is probably the hardest single part of it because I can tell you from personal experience is how do you identify the birds? You get the Sibley book. There are 700 species of birds in this book here. You know, it's just almost daunting. I mean, there's 500 pages in this book. How am I going to identify a bird using this? But getting a book is probably the single uh, most important thing that you can do because it's a great way to look up birds. Yes, there are apps that you can use to identify birds, but having a book is really helpful. Secondly, join your local bird club, Audubon Club, 
uh, and check around to see which ones are the most active. Some bird clubs have one or two walks a year. Some have one a month. Some have, I belong to a bird club that has two walks a, uh, a week. So going on these walks really helps you identify birds and begin to see the detail. You know, that eye ring is important and it's important to know if it's round or if it's oval shaped. How many bar, how many wing bars does that bird have? Learning those things can really help you. And joining a local organization is inexpensive. They're usually less than a hundred bucks to join. And usually the bird walks are either free or they're less than $5. Those are great ways to learn how to bird. The third option that I think for most people that's really reasonable is to go to a birding event. Um, here in North Carolina, we have an event called Wings Over Water. Um, one of my favorite places to go is Ohio for the biggest week. Um, uh, before COVID, I was gonna go to Acadia in Maine and do some birding there. Um, out west, they have all kinds of events for uh, uh, prairie chickens, uh, hawks in the winter time. In the west, it's big owl time. So learning about a uh, birding event and going to a birding event can be a really good way to learn how to bird. Um, the issue with a birding event is it can be expensive. You usually have to stay for a hotel. I strongly encourage you, if you're going to camp, do not camp in a tent. Usually these events are in the spring or in the fall or in the winter time. These are horrible times to be camping. But you can stay in a hotel. Um, they usually, if you book well ahead, six, eight weeks ahead, hotels will give you a discount. Um, but I strongly encourage you to go on to some of the events. Now pick and choose the events that you think you will like. Um, usually these um, tours are $50 to $100, which... It's okay, but usually you get in a bus, you're with two guides, they show you where the birds are, and you can go to these things. Um, going to the events that they have, the dinners they have, the talks they have, are great ways to learn about the birds in that area. And this is all about accumulating knowledge. And you begin to learn that, uh, <laughs> when I first got into photography, I used the word seagull to describe gulls. And I learned pretty fast that there are no animals on the planet called seagulls. They're all called gulls. And then I realized there's not one species of gulls. There are literally dozens of species of gulls. So going to an event like this can really help you learning. Getting a book, joining your local bird club, going to a birding event can really help you learn how to bird. And that's the probably the biggest tip I hope somebody takes from this is that if you wanna get into birding, either just birding or bird photography, Doing things like that will help you a lot learn how to identify birds. And once you begin to identify birds, even if you begin to say, that's a wobbler, that's a sparrow, that's a uh, veery, you will feel a lot better for yourself. And you will begin to learn the locals. So that's my tip number three. I've told you how to get some used camera equipment, get yourself a pair of binoculars, buy yourself a bird book, join your local bird club, go to a birding event. Those are three things that can really help you. The fourth thing I'm going to talk about is joining eBird. eBird does several things. One, it, you're citizen scientist, so you're helping um, scientists track birds, track bird population, track information that you can see. It also tracks migration information that is incredibly useful for birding. Since eBird has come into effect, it has really helped scientists know how birds migrate. So become a eBird member. It allows you to track your birds. It also tells you if your bird that you've seen is commonly seen in the area. It will also tell you what birds have been seen in your area. And it is a really useful thing. It also tracks your information on what birds you've seen. So becoming eBird, you're helping the birds, you're helping scientists, and you're helping yourself. And it's free. So what I encourage you to do is get some used camera equipment, get yourself a pair of binoculars, buy a book, join your local bird club, go to a bird event, and become an eBird member and use it to track the birds that you've seen. 
I want to thank you for watching this video. If you found this video at all helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to this channel because that really helps us in the, uh, the um, YouTube um, metrics. Join us on Patreon. Become a Patreon supporter so that we can keep doing these videos. My name is Sean Leahy, and I want to thank you for watching.